New to After Effects CS6 is the 3D camera tracker, and it is a powerful, nifty feature. What it does is it looks at a video clip where there's been some kind of camera motion. It could be panning, zooming, trucking, point of view, dolly, crane, you name it, some kind of camera motion. And then it creates a camera that tries to emulate that motion, and then allows you to put things on top of the video clip. The video clip remains in 2D space, but the things on top of it are in 3D space. And you can put things on top of that video clip and the camera moves, making it look like those things are attached to the video, like they're moving with the video's motion. It's really phenomenal. So in this lesson, I'm gonna explain how it works. In the next lesson, I'm gonna explain how you apply things to that motion. And in the lesson following that, I'll show you how to create what's called shadow catchers. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and open up 2001 3D Camera Tracking. What we're going to do here is we're going to track the motion of the camera in this clip. This motion is a zoom. It's a pullback. The camera's on a tripod, and we pull back there, showing those buildings. And we're going to track this one over here, where it's kind of a combination of a panning shot and a little bit of a trucking shot thrown in. After we're done doing that analysis, we're then going to, in the next lesson, apply things to those clips, like those stained glass windows, for example they will appear to be stuck to those clips, when in fact they're not. They're objects in 3D space that have perceived motion thanks to a camera, and the camera's down here. If I check keyframes for all these layers, pressing U, the only layer that has keyframes is the camera. So everybody else is in 3D space except for the background video, which remains in 2D space. And in 3D space are these objects, such that when the camera moves, it looks as if they are attached to that video, attached to the objects in the video. Same thing over here for this vineyard. We're going to attach text to the video and have that text follow along with the motion, giving the perception that those words are hanging on those vines like that. The 3D camera tracker is in effect just as the warp stabilizer is in effect, and they both operate similarly. Let me go back to this building shot here. Now, if you were thinking about putting something in here that would match that shape and match that motion, you might go over to Tracker and go over here to Track Motion and choose, instead of Transform, choose Perspective Corner Pin. And that would be a good idea. You put Perspective Corner Pin, you could put your four pins in each of those corners there, and then have a video clip or something go inside there after you're done. And that is a way to do it. And it would work pretty well in this particular case, but you'd want to do it several times, one for each of those spots. So it would take a little while to do that. And in the end, it tends to not be quite exact. It kind of bounces around a little bit as it tries to find those corners. So if you use the 3D camera tracker, it will probably be a little bit more accurate, but it will take a whole lot longer. So there is this little bit of a juggling act. Which one will you use? But I'll show you the 3D camera tracker now, because you know how to use the perspective corner pin already. Then you can decide which one will work in whatever circumstance you want to work in. The other one here, though, of course, the perspective pin would not work at all. You couldn't even begin to track motion here because of all the objects. So in this case, the 3D camera tracker is really your best bet. So to apply the 3D camera tracker to a layer, it's quite simple. You just go over to Effects and Presets and track it down, 3D camera, and it's inside the Perspective group. If you have the Tracker panel open and click on Track Camera, that will apply the effect as well. And if you're down here, you've got the layer selected and the timeline active. You can go to Effects, Perspective, and find it that way. In any event, I'm going to go the way that I would normally go, which is to have a layer active, find it over here in the Effects and Presets panel, just double click on it, and we're off and running. It automatically analyzes the clip, just as the Warp Stabilizer analyzes the clip. And they both work similarly. What they do is they look for objects in motion. The Warp Stabilizer uses the tracking information it gets from those objects and tries to kind of reverse them by having the clip go in the opposite direction as a way to stabilize shaky camera moves. Here, it tracks the objects in motion and then shows you the objects when it's done. And then says, okay, here they are. You can apply something to these things that we tracked. This analyzes in the background, so you can work on other things while it's analyzing. So let's go take a look at this comp over here. I'll close this down like that. And I'll select just the buildings video. And there's the 3D camera tracker effect. When you make it active, you reveal all those little track points. And this is how it works. You get these track points there, and then you hover your cursor over them so you get a target that seems to be pointing in the direction that you want it to point that kind of matches the shape or perspective of the building. It doesn't always work. See how it kind of bends around sometimes there? And over here on this side, it should be bending around. But nevertheless, so you get these little things here. Then you decide which one you want to use, which is the right place for you to use. Then you select that and then attach some kind of clip to it. You can attach a solid layer, 
a null object layer or text, and then later on you can replace the solid layer with a video clip or with a still image or a graphic. But anyway, that's the basic process. You get these little track points when you're done. So let's go back to the buildings here and take a look at this guy. It's still analyzing. So I'm going to pause the video now for a moment, and when it's done analyzing, I'll come back to you. All right, the analysis is just about to wrap up here, but we're not quite done. When the analysis is done, then it has to do one more step, and that's to solve it. That's to create the camera, essentially, based upon all that tracking information. And it does this by figuring out what kind of shot type it was. If you look at the drop-down list, it could be a fixed angle of view or a variable zoom. Well, this is a zoom lens, but it's not a variable zoom, so the fixed angle is probably right since it stayed in the same basic spot. And then it says down here under advanced, what kind of solve method did you use? Well, it used auto detect, which is default, but you could say, no, no, don't do auto detect. A flat scene means that things don't change much and it doesn't go up or down. And a tripod pan is not what this was, even though it was a tripod zoom. So sometimes you need to help it out. But we're going with auto detect. We're going with the defaults here and letting it solve that way. And now it's done. And now that it's done, we'll take a look and see what happened. All these little track points come out there. These are big targets and small track points, but I'll show you how to deal with that one in the next lesson. But that is done, which successfully created these little points that you can attach things to. I'm going to go over and just show you the vineyard as well. The vineyard would be a slightly different process because it's kind of a trucking shot and it's kind of a pan thrown in. But in the end, it'll be able to analyze this as well. So in the next lesson, we will have analyzed these guys already and then we'll start attaching things to them.